If you saw this video, you would know my very first time drinking, I got both high and drunk at the same time. But my first time being drunk drunk takes place back when I was like 14 or 15. And this story takes place at my grandma's crib. No, no, listen, I know that sounds bad, but like, I, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. So the story starts with me and my brother pulling up to the family function. And right off the bat, we notice the chill cousins are nowhere to be seen. So instantly we can tell it's gonna be a long night of engaging in conversations about school, sports, my lack of ability to pull bitches. And about five minutes after arriving, you know, I'm just doing some good old small talk. Oh, hey bud, how's school going? Oh, you know, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, how's sports going? Yeah, the, the sports are good. Nice. <clears throat> so, uh, the, the weather lately, huh? And then after about 20 minutes, me and my brother are just getting our shit flamed by every member of the family. No wonder you can't get a girlfriend. You're ugly as shit. <laughs> Damn, that, that, that was just mean. And don't get me started on you. You had a three year head start and still can't get any bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, we just can't say anything back because last time I tried. Man, still no girlfriend. That's brutal. <laughs> <clears throat> Not as brutal as your third divorce, am I right? <laughs> okay, guys. So instead of flaming the living shit out of this grown man in front of his mom, I decide to be the bigger man. I just laughed that shit off and then got the fuck out of there before they brought up my school grades. So as my brother and I sit down in a different room, I'm just in agony thinking about how everything this dude flamed me for was actually true. But my brother on the other hand, he was whipping up some devious plan. Yo Chains, follow me. Oh, okay. So we walk down to the basement. So uh, what, what are we doing in the basement? He opens a cupboard full of alcohol. Bro just cracks the seal on some vodka and starts downing that shit. Now, usually I would know this is a bad idea, but to be honest, I just got done getting my entire existence shit on by my own family. So I'm really just trying to drink my pain away at this point. I mean, we were passing that bottle drinking like rent was due and the wife was taking the kids. So with that being said, we, we got a little hammered. And keep in mind, this was my first time being drunk. So as soon as I stood up, I ate shit. It was like I had to relearn the controls of life. But we had to get out of the basement or else we'd look suspicious. So our drunk asses plug walked our way up the stairs. But we were trying to act as casual as possible. So we sit back down with the rest of the family like we didn't just down a bottle of vodka. And me and my bro were just sitting there looking at each other trying not to laugh. But the next thing I knew, this dude Uncle Jerry was back on my ass. Hey look, Dumb and Dumber are back. <laughs> and at this point, I'm using every bone in my body not to end this man's whole career. Man, whose gene is it that made you so damn hideous? <laughs> Don't do it, bro. Don't do it, bro. And I really didn't want to do him like that, but the vodka took control. It was your hideous gene, Gerald. But at least I didn't get the same gene that has you 5'2 and balding. Like, I can't tell if you're going through puberty oh or a midlife crisis. And shit, I didn't stop there. And Joe, I don't want to hear you talking. You're built like Baymax from Big Hero 6. What the fuck is Big Hero 6? Mom, I love you. Karen, sit down. Your mac and cheese tastes like ass. And Bob, you're literally a registered s offender. <gasps> Grandma, I love you. Bernard, your hairline looks like it's social distancing from your eyebrows. And Irene, how are you 47 and still work at McDonald's and you got no drip? Come on, bro. Friendly fire. Oh shit, you're right. My bad, my bad. Needless to say, I was handing out smoke to everybody. Something in that vodka turned me to a demon. And I guess since everyone was mad at me for dissing the entire family, they never knew I was drunk as hell. But in the end, I did feel really bad for roasting my entire family tree. But ever since that day, everybody stopped flaming me. So, uh, <clears throat> it was worth it. 
your very first time buying from the plug. It's a special moment. It marks the beginning of a bond. A bond so strong and full of trust that it can only compare to that of your barber. Now your first time copping from the plug can go many different ways, but my first time took place way, way, way back when i was seven okay that's cat but i was i was 13. now as some 13 year olds my homies and i were oblivious of how to get our hands on some sweet sweet juicy succulent magic broccoli but you know what they say if there's a will there's a way so we did what any seventh grader would do we searched that shit up on google where do i buy weed and somehow one of the first things that came up was some motherfucker on reddit like J just order a pizza that the pizza delivery guy stands a 78% chance of being baked. Just ask him where to find some gas. Simple as oh, that. Oh, yeah. bet. So we call up Lil Caesars like, hello, can I, can I get a medium pepperoni pizza, please? Yeah. Yup. Yeah. I, I bet. And about 45 minutes later, the doorbell rings. We open the door to see some 48-year-old man who's probably going through his second divorce. Sh should we ask him? Yo, he does not know where to find that shit. Oh, uh, th th that'll be 1369. Uh, he he here you go. All right, have a good day. But wait, um, do, do, do you happen to know where to find some of that? Some of that good dope. Good dope? Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. If you wanted some ranch dip, just say that. Nah, 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 nah. What, what he's trying to say here is, do you know where to find some of that good, good shit? Ah, oh, you want some good shit, huh? You sure won't find it at Little Caesars. <laughs> this pizza is ass. Go to Pizza Hut or something. <laughs> Well, shit. What the fuck just happened? Okay, the guy on Reddit said there's a 78% chance. Maybe we just got unlucky with this one. And our dumbasses decide to order from Little Caesars again. Oh, uh, that, that, that'll be 13. Okay, new plan. Yo, I think I know a guy. So Bob locates a local plug Snapchat. Billy adds him, and bro adds back. So now we've located the plug, but we had no clue on how to go about hitting this man up. Hello, Frederick Gordon Williams. I have reason to believe you are a plug and will be able to sell us some devil's lettuce as we are minors, currently 13 years old. Just give us your home address and we will skirt and pull up soon. Sincerely, Billy. Instantly blocked, bro. Looking back, we sent the most federal message possible. We hit this man with his government name and asked him for his home address. But we had no clue that was federal. Like, huh, that's peculiar. I wonder why he blocked us. So we did what any seventh grader would do. We searched that shit up on Google. How to hit up the plug. Be simple and forward, use slang, act cool. And after conducting a little more research, we were ready to try again. So I added him on my Snapchat. Yo, 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 Big G, L let me cop some of that gas real quick, Cronum. Oh shit, he responded. H how much you need? Sh shit, wh what do I say? Search it up. Uh, th three pre-rolls, three pre-rolls. Let me get three pre-rolls, fam. All right, meet me at Stickman Park at 2.30. So now we'd set a place and a time to cop some grass. However, what Frederick Gordon Williams didn't know was that we were a whopping 13 years old. Keep in mind, we were still in middle school, but this dude was in grade 10. Shit, I'm pretty sure he was 20 years old, but but was still in grade 10, which was pretty fucking scary for us seventh graders. So we threw on some drip we believed would make us look a little bit older, and we headed off to purchase some of Satan's spinach. We arrived at the park a little bit early and as we waited we discussed our plan if he asks how old we are we're 16 if he asks our grade we're grade 10 if he asks our pronouns we are he slash bro chili he's not gonna interrogate us it's a simple business transaction oh shit there he is and as frederick approached us i could feel my blood pressure rising some would say i was shitting bricks Yo, you got the money? Uh, uh um, how, how much is it? How much you got? Well, I, I, I brought a, a $50 bill. Shit, it's usually 60 but I guess I can do it for 50 Oh, th thank you so much, man. Holy shit, this is a fucking steal. Here you go, but remember, this is OG Bubba Killer Death Paralyzing Kush 9000. 
It got its name for a reason. Don't worry, we do weed all the time. Yeah, we're super teenager and shit. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, whatever, man. Well, well, have a good day, sir. And at last, 50 bones later, we had acquired some kush. Now, this wasn't our first time smoking, but our tolerance levels were low as fuck. So we pass around our first pre-roll, coughing <coughs> up a fucking storm. <coughs> And then we smoke up the next one and the next one until we're indubitably zooted. <clears throat> God damn. Are y'all feeling it? Shit. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Well, what about you, Chains? Shit, I think he's feeling it. And as we made our way back to Bob's crib, my frame rates were dropping, my eyes were drying up, and my brain cells were unresponsive. In other words, I was fucking fried. We get back to Bob's crib and all I can think about is food. The munchies had hijacked my brain, but luckily for me, Bob's mom had just went shopping. Unluckily for Bob's mom, she was gonna have to go shopping again. The boys and I threw on the amazing world of gumball on TV and we fucking demolished every single crumb from Bob's cabinet. Cause goddamn, Frederick Gordon Williams was right. They don't call it the OG Bubba Killer Death Paralyzing Kush 9000 for no reason. First dates have the potential to be magical, fantastical, romantical, a night you will never forget. But they also got the potential to be straight booty. I mean, first dates are just a gamble, bro, especially if it's from a dating app. Like, you could show up to your first date with a 5'4 blonde Tinder girl and end up finding out she's 5'9. And she's brunette. And she's a dude. I mean, first dates from dating apps is kind of like buying one of those SpongeBob popsicles from an ice cream truck. Like, you know it's not gonna look the same as the advertisement, but the question is, how fucked up can it really be? And let me just say, extremely fucked up. I'm talking massive buck teeth, eyes crossed with a bite taken out of it, and I'm not talking about the popsicles. And these are the exact reasons my very first date was not from Tinder. Also because I was in grade seven and uh, that, that would be illegal. And when I was in grade seven, I was 12, as, as most grade sevens were, and for whatever reason, me and my homies loved going to the mall after school, which was weird, because we, we had no money. So after another successful day of walking around and being too broke to buy anything, we walked back to the bus terminal by the mall, and as we walked up to our bus stop, we see these two girls waiting there. And the closer we got, the more familiar these girls started looking until we realized one of them was in our class. And so we walk up to them like, yo, are, are you Kate? Oh shit, Billy Bob and Chains, <laughs> what's up? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Oh, I'm good. Uh, th this is Jessica. She's new to our school. Uh, hi. <laughs> what's up? Hello, Jessica. Oh, what, what brings you guys to the mall? Oh, nothing much. Just uh, just walking around and not buying anything because we don't have any money. <laughs> Yo, us too. And so we all get on the bus and we're just talking and shit for a good 20 minutes until my stop comes up. So I'll pull the thingy, but before I get off the bus, I ask Jessica. Yo, Jessica, uh, do, do you Snapchat by any chance? Y yeah, I do. L let me add you. What's your Snap name? And I remember I had some shitty ass username like, oh shit, it's um... MLG Pro No Scope or Illuminati Confirmed. Yo, kid, get the fuck off the bus. Uh, sorry, one second, please. Um, where was I? MLG Pro No Scope or Illuminati Confirmed. And when I got home, I went on Snapchat, accepted a request, and we started talking. And we snapped all night to the point I was smiling, kicking my feet in the air and shit. Yo, I'm coming in. No, 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 wait, wait, don't, don't. I'm, uh, I'm beating my meat. Wait, sh shit. Yo, what boy has you smiling like that? B boy. It's a girl. Man, shut the fuck up. Oh, oh, shit, you're serious. Whoa, wait, so the whole time you're watching Powerpuff Girls? It just had a good plot. Okay, bro. Okay, so this is what you gotta know. And my brother started running me through the do's and don'ts of being in a talking stage. I right, listen. Don't text her too much, but don't text her too little. Don't talk to too many other girls. Yep, nope, that, that won't be a problem right there. Yep, I, I know, buddy. And uh, you also gotta talk to her at school. So the next day at lunch, Bob, Billy, and I walk over to Jessica and her two friends, and we start talking again, and we make plans to go to the mall together. And boom, all 
all of a sudden we started forming a little friend group. It was me, Bob, and Billy with Jessica, Kate, and Nikki. And we started hanging out damn near every day, hitting the mall, buying nothing, going to Nikki's house, doing nothing. But we had fun, and so inevitably, Bob and Kate start having a thing, Billy and Nikki start having a thing, and that just left me and Jessica. And so one late night, we're on Snapchat with my feet kicking in the air faster than ever, and Jessica hits me with a, so I've been thinking, well, uh, I, I like you. I like you back. So, and I typed up, do you want to be my girlfriend? And I fucking threw my phone across the room, nervous as hell. I get the notification. And when I go to check what she said, she was like, yes, I do. And call me Josh Giddy, the way I just bagged this 12 year old. But the next day at school, when me, Billy and Bob walk up to our girlfriends, I started getting all nervous and shit. There was something about the title of being a boyfriend that just had me shitting bricks, bro. It was like, hey, Chains, how are you? Oh, you know, uh, I'm good. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, uh, how, how are you? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> <clears throat> but now that all three of the boys had acquired girlfriends, Billy was like, hey, w why don't we all see a movie this weekend? Like, like it'll be a triple date. Oh yeah, that's God, a great idea. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's a date. A uh, triple date. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. And by the time the weekend rolled around, I was still terrified of the fact that I was going on a date. And to be honest, I was also scared of the movie, bro. We came to watch It, which as a 12-year-old sounded like straight nightmare fuel, bro. But nonetheless, me, Bob, and Billy hop on the bus and arrive at the movie theater fashionably late. And so when we walk through the doors, there was our three little girlfriends excited for our first dates. So we all walk up, hug, and then go to get our tickets. And I drop my entire life savings on her ticket and then go into debt for mine, but not Nonetheless, we head to the theater. Wait, sh should we get popcorn? Oh yeah, of course. Hey man, uh, how much is a large popcorn? A uh, large popcorn, th th that'll be $10. Damn! What, what happened? Are, are you okay? Yeah, I just realized they ran out of popcorn. Are, are you fucking stupid? Yeah, no, don't worry. Thank you, man. <laughs> is it no problem? <laughs> Have a good day. And we got to our seats and sat down and the movie began. And as the movie progressed, I realized it wasn't even too scary, but about 20 minutes deep, I get a tap on my shoulder from Bob. And he gestures to me the fact that him and Kate are holding hands. And I look over to Billy and Nikki and they're all cuddled up and shit, which meant I had to make a move, bro, which inconveniently made my hands start sweating bullets. So now I was in a position where I couldn't just grab her hand Hand while my shit was sweaty as hell cause then she'd think I'm weird but then I also couldn't just sit there and do nothing the whole time cause then she'd also think I'm weird so I just started doing the only thing I could think of which was blowing on my hand like some hot soup and believe it or not made me look fucking weird but at least my hand was dry so I go and hold her hand but when I do I make a grave mistake a, a tactical error bro when I held her hand my hand was on top and hers was underneath against the armrest and my dumb ass was scared I was gonna crush her arm or some shit and I don't know where I got the idea that I even could crush her arm from, bro, because those 12-year-old stickman arms couldn't crush a fucking pretzel if they tried. But for whatever reason, I decided my best option would be to hover my arm slightly above hers so my one-pound arm couldn't come down and fucking demolish her forearm. And you know, this was cool for about... 60 seconds until I started feeling the burn which started hurting so bad that I forgot I was even watching a movie I was just a hundred percent focused on thugging this shit out and about an hour into the movie I was just fucking shaking relentlessly I mean at this point it wasn't even about not having this girl think I was weird because lord knows it was too late for that shit but now it was about proving to myself that I could finish the movie this way and sure enough I did but at what cost? Wow, you, you were so scared you were shaking, huh? N no, I, I wasn't scared at all, actually. <laughs> uh, oh my god, I, are, are you sweating? No. So, you know, looking back, it, it wasn't my best performance, you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, after that triple date, Billy's girlfriend, Nikki, ended up breaking up with him and gave up on dating dudes as a whole. So, I mean, psh. It could always be worse, bro. Get your money, man, like a oh, I'm hopeful, yes I am, hopeful, but today, take this music and use it, let it take you away, and be hopeful, hopeful, and he'll make a way, I know it ain't his aid, but... That's okay, cause we hooked Oh, wish that you could show some love Now listen to the hang so much when you see some other people coming now I wish I could teach the world my screen Why your music and have them chipping off the joy I bring 
I wish that we can hold hand This and instead of this unless it's from a grown man And I wish the families that lock But I love get some stocks Brand new shock in the lock But some gloves and I My first time eating magic mushrooms Now this story takes place on a spooky Halloween night and of course, when you're young, Halloween is about dressing up and getting candy from strangers. But as you get older, you grow to realize the true meaning of Halloween is to commit as many devious and malicious crimes in one night as humanly possible. Like when me and my homies first transformed from some young, innocent gentlemen into some unethical and deceitful delinquents, we planned out some criminal activities for our first teenager Halloween. Yo, trick or treating is for nerds, where we're gonna drink alcohol and smoke grass. Woo. Yeah. That is so teenager. So you know, we, we drink their drink and we, we smoke their grass. Man. I sure could fuck up some Reese's Pieces right now. Not gonna lie, some Skittles would be fire. Alright, fuck it. So we threw on last year's Halloween drip and shamelessly went trick-or-treating baked as fuck. Trick-or-treat. Aren't you guys a little bit old to be trick-or-treating? No, but we got our candy and we went back to Billy's crib and the munchies took over. I mean, we fucked that shit up so fast that we changed costumes and we spun the block. Tr trick or, tr tr trick or treat. Oh, uh, d didn't you guys already come here? N no, there's a snake in my boot. So all Halloween, me and the gang pretty much just ate chocolate. But by the time next year rolled around, Okay, this Halloween is going to be the best Halloween yet. But, but how can we top last year? Yeah, we, we already smoked grass and ingested alcohol well underaged. Because I got these. <gasps> this dude, Billy, whips out a handful of shrooms. And honestly, Billy didn't even need to convince us. Because me and Bob were trying to have the best Halloween ever ever so we split it up and we all down a sizable amount of magic mushrooms for our first time and let me tell you there are many smooth ways to consume some magic mushrooms one being the pizza technique as, as well as the good old pb and shroom sammy however we had smoked and we had drank before but Magic mushrooms were completely out of our expertise. So we just choked them shits down raw. And it was strange. It, it tasted like I just ate earth. If, if earth was dry as fuck and like chewy. But about 20 minutes after eating the shrooms, Billy has a genius idea. Okay, hear me out. We go trick or treating, collect some candy real quick and come back. So when these mushrooms hit, we can be eating good. Okay. Wait, then then we need some costumes. Okay, I, I do have three costumes, but but like just don't ask any questions, okay? Why do you have no questions, bro? Now let's go get this bag of, of, of candy. So we're mobbing around the neighborhood in some gangster Teletubby suits. And we roll up to the first house like Trick or, trick, or treat. Treat. trick or treat. Oh, you guys are so cute. And we were banging out house after house. But after about four houses, I started to notice my Teletubby mitts were looking a little suspicious. But I didn't have time to think about the psychedelics that were potentially invading my brain because I had bigger priorities. Go cop some Halloween candy. Trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. But as we walked up to the eighth house, I was undeniably tripping balls. Cause as I looked up at Bob, I just started uncontrollably laughing my ass off. And Bob Shrooms must have kicked in too because we were both just hysterically laughing at each other for no reason. <laughs> 
But then the door opened, and I saw this tall-ass bald dude with an unconceivably large smile on his face. I mean, the shrooms made it look like his smile was just unproportionately big, and I, I just assumed it was a Halloween mask. <laughs> Man, I, I love your Halloween costume. <laughs> what costume? <laughs> Oh, holy shit. <laughs> we need to get home ASAP. So we're making our way back home, tripping balls in our Teletubby costumes, and I'm just seeing the stars falling out of the sky. Then out of nowhere, Billy yells, What the fuck is that? Uh, uh shit. I I'm probably just tripping, but it, it looks like zombies running towards us at, at full speed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it too. Oh shit, we gotta run. So me, Billy, and Bob start booking it back to Billy's house. And I am hauling ass because there is no way I'm getting packed up by some zombies right now. And when I look back, I don't see some zombie costume. No, I see some real ass zombies. Like bones sticking out, eyeballs look like they haven't blinked in centuries, and that shit just made me run faster. Cause to me, this was a life or death situation. I mean, in reality, it probably just looked like... <sighs> we get back to Billy's crib. Holy shit, get in, get in. Lock it, lock it, lock it. And we were not taking any chances. I mean, we barricaded every single door in the entire house. And for a second, it was a horrible trip. I mean, I thought I was in the zombie apocalypse. But once we settled down, we were having the time of our lives, chilling and eating candy while tripping balls. Booga, booga. Listen, most of us have been high before, and most of us have also been drunk before, but it truly takes one determined, perseverant, curious and brave dumbass to be high and drunk at the same time which perfectly describes your boy way 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 back in grade seven see this story is crazy because i had never been high or drunk before this incident and all at once i turned from just a young innocent boy into the low IQ human I am today. So it was grade seven and my school had just got out for spring break. The boys and I had already planned out a little get together for one of our friend's birthdays. So after school, me and the boys link up. We go and clean up our friend Billy's house cause you can't throw a birthday function in a dirty house. And it was dirty, bro. So by the time we were done cleaning, it was already about 7.30. So that meant everyone started to show up. So the boys and I started doing your average middle school activities. By that, I mean we're wrestling, we're breaking stuff. And the girls were just posted on the couch. Because what are we supposed to do? Talk to them? Hell nah. But eventually we got tired of throwing each other around. So we're all sweaty and shit and we sit down on the couch. Leaving at least one and a half meters between us and the girls, of course. And we, we just sat there. <clears throat> but then out of nowhere, Billy's like, I got a brownie. And I'm over here thinking, the fuck? The hoes don't care about your brownie, bruh. But then Billy started to elaborate. Guys, this is no ordinary brownie. I stole it from my uncle's do not eat cabinet. And he says they're magical. Oh, he probably means they're magically tasty. I need a bite of that. Does anyone want a piece? Yeah, I'll try one. Yeah, sure, I want I some. mean, I am kind of yes, hungry. Yes, please. So everyone has their piece, and they're kind of building up the suspense. Like, are you guys ready? Are you sure we should do this? And I'm still clueless. I'm over here thinking, it's a brownie. What's the big deal? <laughs> the fuck? This brownie isn't magical. This shit tastes like ass. Oh, Chains, how do you feel? I feel like I just ate some dog shit, bruh. I'm gonna keep it a stack. Your uncle needs a new baker for real. No, Chains, it's not about the taste. They're grass-infused brownies. They're supposed to get you high. Man, what? I feel like this is the kind of thing you're supposed to say before I downed it. So everyone eats their piece of brownie and then continues to sit in awkward silence for like the next two hours. But then the brownie starts to hit. People are dropping like flies. And eventually, everyone felt it except me. And they're just doing high stuff, like eating all the food in the kitchen, watching Netflix documentaries. 
But for me, the brownie still hasn't hit. And Billy notices that I'm sober, and he's like, wait here. Bro goes into his mom's liquor cupboard and pours out unholy amounts of vodka and just hands me the cup. Keep in mind, I had never drank before, so I have no clue whether or not this is a lot. So I literally chugged the whole thing. Looking back, it had to have been at least five shots all at once. But man, I had no clue. So I'm, I'm just sitting there chilling on the couch, waiting for something magical to happen. And I start to think, maybe I'm just invincible. Like, like nothing can affect me. It all hit at once. The brownie and the vodka was out here running combos on me like John Cena and Randy Orton. And bro, something in that brownie changed my settings and enabled third person perspective. It was the weirdest feeling. It was like I was watching myself on a movie, but like, like I was in the movie, bro, I don't know. And apparently it also gave me the ability to teleport because I swear when I blinked, I teleported from Billy's crib to the front of a McDonald's line. And listen, I have no clue what happened in between that time, but I had no business being in a public setting right now. Hi, what can I get for you? Uh, uh sir, can I, can I help you? Yeah. Uh, what, what can I get for you? Listen, because I was high, drunk, and apparently had no social capabilities, I was spitting some nonsense to this poor McDonald's employee. Yeah, uh, do, do y'all got the, the Popeye's chicken sandwich? Uh, sir, this is McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, and let me get that Dairy Queen Blizzard. Dairy Queen, what? And, uh, uh, what, what kind of nachos do you guys have? I blinked again, and we were all back at Billy's house. The very last thing I remember from that night is there was absolutely no blankets. So I was out here using literally anything I could find for a little bit of warmth. But eventually, after a long night, I passed out. <laughs> There's levels to friendships. I mean, you could have known your homie since you were two years old. You could have lived together. I mean, you could have survived the whole zombie apocalypse together. But shit, the truth is, you haven't truly experienced brotherhood until you and your homie have participated in a two-man mission. Like, just look at Kobe and Shaq, man. That type of chemistry can only be achieved by running a two-man. Shit, I bet these motherfuckers were running two-mans every night. And you already know Kobe was laying down that mamba mentality while Shaq had his girl, oh, kneeling. But for those of you who may be wondering, Chains, what the hell is a two-man mission? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's quite simple, really. It's when you're gonna link with a girl, but you bring your homie and she brings her homie. And what this does is it sets an environment when you and your homie me can dribble, pass, alley-oop, and ideally dunk that shit. Now don't get me wrong, it's simple, but not easy. I remember my first two-man mission like it was yesterday. It took place when I was in grade seven. And it started when my friend Joe hit me up like, yo bro, I'm going to this girl Sophie's house and her friend Ava's there. You, you trying to pull up? And I was like, am I trying to pull up? Hell yeah, I'm trying to pull up. So we show up to her house and I'm new to this whole thing. So I'm sitting there like, ah, so up. Uh, what now? We, we could watch a scary movie. Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Uh, well, actually, uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of scary movies. Man, shut the fuck. So we're watching a scary movie, and to be honest with you, it was simply the best scary movie I'd ever seen in my entire life. So I was really getting invested in this plot. And Ava's like, oh my god, I'm scared. <laughs> and that shit went way over my head. What? Well, why? It's not even at the scary part yet. And then only 30 minutes into the movie, Joe and Sophie are like, Yo, we'll be right back. Oh, okay. Do you guys want me to pause the movie? <laughs> nah, it's all good, bro. And you see, what Joe just did right there was a calculated move. In basketball terms, he just set an ISO. So now it was two 1v1s. And the situation was absolutely perfect, but the problem was... I actually like the fucking movie. And that violates rule number three in section seven of how to pull off a success successful too man never give a fuck about the movie because the truth is the movie length is like the shot clock if you end up actually watching the entire movie you failed the mission but i had no clue and to be honest i, I didn't even know what a two man was at the time so i got some popcorn and i was just watching the movie but when the climax of the movie was about to come around i did something that violated every term and agreement of the two man mission i went over to joe and sophie like hey 
hey guys, quick, you're gonna miss the best part. Oh, fuck. And I missed the climax of the movie, but shit, I seen a climax. And needless to say, Joe never invited me to a two-man mission since. But you know I had to redeem myself, even if it was three years later when I was in grade 10. It was a Saturday night, and me and Bob were looking for something to do. And I'm gonna keep it a stack with you, bro. I had no motion. Like, my Snapchat was drier than a Popeye's biscuit, bro. But lucky for me, Bob had a roster. And I'm talking an all-star lineup of girls who just want Bob on their body. And I don't blame them. I mean, shit, I got Bob on my body right now. And you can too at chainsclub.shop. That's right, we got hoodies, shirts, beanies, socks, keychains, stickers, you name it. And starting at the price of $4.20, Bob can be all yours. <laughs> or if you want me... I, I wouldn't mind being on your keychain or something. <laughs> Treat me like white tea. So as I was saying, me and Bob were bored. So Bob hits up this girl named Avery like, what are you doing right now? And she's like, just chilling. Who you with? My friend Alice. Let's link. I'm with my homie. Okay, is he cute? cute as hell okay come over and i'm excited as fuck so we get bob's sister to drive us to avery's crib and as we pull up to her house i remember a crucial detail that i'd been forgetting this whole time i I was scared of the hoes, bruh. And as we walked up to her door, I was starting to get flashbacks of me and Joe's two man, where Joe tossed up an alley-oop for both of us, and I blocked his shot, metaphorically and literally. And as I'm psyching myself up, Bob calls Avery to tell her we're here, and she's like, so, uh, my, my parents are asleep, so you're gonna have to come in through my window. Shit. So we walk around the side of the house to Avery's room, and lucky for us, there's this big-ass window, and I'm like, yo, c can you open it so we can get in? And she's like, uh, it, it is open. Bro, only this tiny ass rectangle in the top left was open at a 60 degree angle. But that was our only way in, so I helped Bob up and through the window. But now I gotta get up there, and I'm bigger than Bob, so I put my head through, and I'm trying to slowly creep into the room. And then I lean just a little too far, and I'm headed face first onto Alice's hardwood floor. And listen, Bob has come in clutch many times. He saved me from drowning, coyotes, getting in trouble, but out of all these things i'm most grateful for bob catching me as i fell through this fucking window because drowning and dying would have been pretty bad like boohoo rip chains you know what i'm saying but imagine falling through a window and eating shit face first in front of the hose like i would have preferred the drowning bro but after that close call I, I was a little flabbergasted you know what i'm saying but alice has the audacity to ask me this loaded ass question like oh hey wh what's your name uh me yeah you uh it's a uh, the name's for real. Chains for real. Nice to meet you, Mr. For Real. I'm Alice. And so we all just started talking and shit, but I keep noticing Alice was getting a bunch of text messages. And I remember thinking it was probably her mom or something, so I shrugged that shit off, and I'm like, yo, we should watch a movie. Yeah, oh we my should. God, yeah. And I wasn't about to make the same mistake I made last time, so I found the most dog shit horror movie on the face of Netflix and threw that shit on. And man, that shit was ass. In fact, it was so ass that we, we just started cuddling and shit, like, what else was there to do? But now that we were close, I could feel the vibrations of Alice's phone getting a call. So she's like, one second, I'll be right back. And I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but I could low-key hear what she was saying through the door. I'm just at Avery's house. We're watching a movie. Oh my God. Okay, that's fine. Okay. But when she comes back, she puts a pillow between us. Like the same type of shit two dudes do to make sure they don't fuck in their sleep. And I'm trying to piece everything together. And as I'm coming to the conclusion that this girl has a boyfriend, I hear footsteps coming towards the door. And when the door opens, I'm fucking bam boozled to see a 60 year old man who looks furious and i'm just hoping this isn't alice's boyfriend because if it is we got bigger problems on our hands but as i seen the way this man looked at bob i realized he's avery's dad and bob wasted no time jumping out that fucking window but for me let's just say that shit wasn't very elegant because i got stuck for what felt like five minutes making eye contact with this grown ass man well what are you what are you trying to seduce my dad or something like like get the fuck out and i'm not gonna lie we ran bro and once we made it home me and bob were relieved but when i go to check my phone i got a little notification on snapchat and i'm expecting it to be alice or or maybe even team snapchat or something i don't know but i sure as hell wasn't expecting it to be a motherfucker named ryan donaldson and ryan must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning because he's like what the fuck did you do dude so i hit him back with a who this and he's like ryan donaldson yeah no i can see your username bro but i have no clue who you are 
I'm Alice's boyfriend, bitch. And Ryan got his shit hit with an instant block, bro. And so the moral of the story is, if you're gonna hang out with a girl who has a boyfriend, turn off your snap maps, bro. There's a lot of things in life that I don't really understand. But if there's one thing I can truly comprehend, it's being grounded. Because in my time, I've served a total of 547 days and 16 hours in the slammer. And through a year and a half of extensive first-hand research, I've come to the profession professional conclusion that getting grounded is straight ass bro you're locked in your room with no phone no computer like what do you want me to do think about my actions <laughs> Hell nah. Being grounded had a young me doing the stupidest shit ever, bro. Like, I was popping handstands, hitting my head against the wall, playing with the door stopper thingy. Shit, I got so bored, I even read a few pages of a book like an absolute nerd. And now that I think about it, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth was actually a spectacular read. Now listen, there's only one thing worse than being grounded, and that's being falsely imprisoned for life. Well, now that I think about it, there's a lot of things worse than being grounded, but, but one of which is being grounded during summer, bro. There's something about being able to hear all the happy children, the ice cream trucks, your homies having fun, the hoes throwing rocks at your window asking you to come outside. Well, you just cry yourself to sleep because there never was any hoes throwing rocks at your window asking you to come outside. It's just you, your Percy Jackson books, some used toilet paper, and the existential thoughts in your head questioning if it's even worth it. And listen, I'm sure everyone can pick up on the fact that I'm a really intelligent dude, smart, all around really but trust me when i say i wasn't always this smart bro in fact in kindergarten my dumbass fully believed with my whole heart that being grounded meant your parents would just dig a decent sized hole in your backyard toss you in and bury you alive for the time being and so i'm sure you could imagine my surprise when my og friend of five days said yeah i got grounded for two whole weeks Holy fucking shit balls, dude. Are you okay? No, man. It's really hard. I, I didn't get to touch any of my toys or anything. Damn. How long ago was that, man? Oh, I'm still grounded. What? No, you're not. Yeah, dude. I'm grounded right now. No the fuck you're not. And I wouldn't truly find out what being grounded was until seven years later. I was in grade seven. It was a beautiful sunny summer day at approximately 11 a.m. And me and the boys were freely roaming our city. Little did I know we wouldn't be free for long. And as the boys and I roamed the city looking for a move, one of Bob's girls calls him up and is like, okay, so my friend Becky is in Hawaii for a few days with her family, and she said I could bring you over. And just like that, Bob could have wrapped it up and claimed some cheeks. But the boy Bob was never one to leave the homies behind. So not only did he convince his girl to let us come, but he went above and beyond. He got his girl to bring some of her friends over too. And now we're hyped because we had now located the move and quite a marvelous move if I do say so myself. Now keep in mind, all of us knew Becky and had been to Becky's house many times before, but Becky was all the way in Hawaii, so she had no clue about the marvelous move about to take place at her own crib. But regardless, me and the homies walk into Becky's crib and they low-key got a little get together in the works. I see Bob's girl, I see Bob's girl's friends, and then I see a mutual friend of mine named Dennis and he brought his girl. Now a little backstory about Dennis. Dennis was two years older than me, making him in high school, and to be fair, from grade seven to high school is a colossal difference. Dennis was taller, had a more developed frame, and Dennis even had some facial hair in progress. The amount of facial hair that put my peach fuzz to shame. And to put it quite simply, Dennis was a menace. But regardless, that's my homie's homie, so I walk up and dap him up. And then everyone heads over to Becky's room. Now keep in mind, Becky had simply invited Bob and Bob's girl to come over. And somehow, we ended up being eight people deep in that joint. And so that means technically, the other six of us were straight trespassing. So we were all chilling in Becky's room, chopping it up for a good hour and a half. Until eventually, people start exploring her house. Now in Becky's room, it was just me, Bob, Bob's girl girl and Bob's girl's friend named Lily. And so we're all just talking until I hear someone yell from the room down the hall. Yo, Chains, get in here right now. And I don't know exactly what I was expecting to see as I walked into that bathroom, but it was absolutely not seeing Dennis drop a condom filled with water on Billy's head. And of course I laugh because th that's, that's comedy gold right there, but it also made me realize maybe we shouldn't be here dropping condoms on each other's heads. But pfft, 
Who was I to tell Dennis what to do? He had facial hair, so he was practically a grown man to my standards. So I just turned around, went back to the room, and continued chilling with Bob. And as we talked, the music progressively got louder, and Dennis progressively became more of a menace. And it had got to the point where the speakers were booming, and Dennis was lobbing condom water balloons off Becky's balcony. And then one time, Dennis either almost hit or just missed Becky's neighbor with one of these condom water balloons. So this grown man looks down at a condom that seems to have fell from the heavens. Then he looks up and sees Dennis scrambling inside the Becky's crib with the speakers blasting music. And then he continued on his way. And we were all just having a fantastic time in Becky's room until we hear the downstairs door swing open. And we all absolutely shit our pants and run onto the balcony. Hey. I just texted the family who lives here and they said no one is supposed to be in the house. Everyone needs to leave right now or I'm calling the cops. And that's exactly what we did. No messing around, we were out that hoe. And we all went to Bob's girl's house for an emergency meeting because we were all scared as fuck. And now Bob's girl and Becky are texting and Becky's like, my parents are pissed. They want to talk to everyone's parents and they know how many people were there. So we all devise a foolproof plan. Okay, we give Becky our phone numbers, tell it's our parents phone numbers and we act super disappointed in our children we all agreed on this plan and the emergency meeting was dismissed and over the next few days we all got texts from a very unhappy becky's father who made sure to specify the amount of condoms that were found in the bathtub we all respond with some bullshit along the lines of hello mr beckerson i'm very sorry to hear about the inconsiderate acts of chains and how he's invaded your home Rest assured, Chains will feel the wrath of this thick leather belt as it repeatedly beats against his cheeks to discipline him for his heinous actions. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. But come to find out, Lily's dumbass responded with some shit like, Dear Mr. Beckerson, thank you for letting me know, but Lily did nothing wrong as she didn't know she wasn't allowed there. Plus, she didn't even make a mess or anything on God. Put some respect on my daughter's name. Period. And just like that, our foolproof plan got fucked. And Becky's father texted each of us saying, You are coming to the house at 3.15pm today or I'm calling the cops. And shit, looking back, Becky's father was most definitely bluffing. Like, say I didn't go, what was he gonna tell the cops? 911, what's your emergency? Hey, uh, there, there was eight kids who invaded my home three days ago. Okay, sir, did they break in? No, uh... Well, no, no, no my, my daughter, my daughter gave them the key. Sir, why the fuck are you calling 911? There, there, there was condoms in the bathtub. But like I said, I wasn't very smart and I didn't have the brain capacity to think that far ahead. So everyone shows up to the house and Becky's father sits us down and makes each of us individually call our parents and explain what we had done. And I went first. Hey, mom, uh, so... I went to Becky's house the other day, but she was in Hawaii and I, I wasn't really invited. And there, there, there was condoms in the bathtub. Needless to say, we all got our shit whooped and I received my very first grounding with the sentence of one month in the slammer.